Good evening. I was very pleased when ISA Forum asked me to make a presentation of my career as a sociologist. I must say I was also alarmed because I felt this was a request made at a late development in my life. Perhaps I've become a fuddy-duddy or that perhaps I was nearing my, the end of my career in the social sciences. Nevertheless, it was a good moment to reflect on my sociological past and see if there's any remaining residue from that. My name is Salim Tamari. I am a professor of sociology at Birzeit University in Palestine. I am also the editor of the Jerusalem Quarterly, which is published by the Institute for Palestine Studies. I consider myself a historical sociologist and an urbanist. My work in sociology has traversed a number of themes in which I have dabbled, including sociology of early Islam, ethnography of peasant societies, social movements, urban dynamics in the Eastern Mediterranean, Ottoman social history, biography, and social history, as well as Jerusalem studies. My work in sociology has been dominated by four different conceptual themes. First, the collapse of Ottoman modernity and its promise of a multi-ethnic social formation and the resultant formation of colonial Arab societies following the end of the First War. Second, the process of dismantling a vibrant Palestinian society in the colonial era by settler colonial Zionism and the growth of extraterritorial Palestinian national identity. Third, the process of urbanization and proletarianization of Palestinian society in the context of colonial settler control and the centrality of the land question in identity formation. And finally, the reading or a reading of Levantine and Palestinian social history through biography and subaltern identities. In order to explain uh, how my ideas evolved, I will give you a snapshot of my recent uh, book publications, which have been published in the last 10 years. The first is a volume called Mountain Against the Sea, Palestine's Halted Modernity. It deals with issues of modernity, migration, small town ideology, and the coastal culture versus mountain peasant culture. The second book is called Year of the Locust, Erasure of the Ottoman Era in Palestine, was published in 2011. Uh, this is a treatise on the eradication of Ottoman society in the Levant as seen through the eyes of a young Ottoman soldier who wrote his diary in the years 1915 to 1917. My third book is called The Great War and the Remaking of Palestine, published in 2018. Uh, this is a study of social history through ethnography, cartography, and early urban planning. And the fourth book with landed property and public endowments in Jerusalem, which was written with my colleague Munir Fakhreddin and published in 2019, is a study of Islamic waqf property and its function in dealing with public endowments and the preservation of family properties in the old city of Jerusalem. A fifth volume published recently in 2020 uh, it's called The Other Jerusalem, which was edited with Rashid Khalidi, the historian. And this is an anthology of writings on Jerusalem. Uh, it deals with the sociology of sacred space, the topography, demography, cartography of the holy city. I also have a forthcoming book on photography and social history. It's called Camera Palestina. Photography and the Sensual Impulse, which uh, will be published with Esam Nassar and Stefan Shihi, and is due to appear 
by the University of California Press in 2022. Uh, you ask, how did you become a sociologist and how did you choose research area to specialize in? My early training was in Weberian historical sociology. My MA thesis on the economic ethos of mercantile society in early Islam appeared, and from that I published my first essay on the nature of rebellion and early Islamic radicalism in the work of Abu Dhar al-Ghafari. I later did my PhD in Manchester University in the late 70s and early 80s on peasant societies and social movements. My mentors were Peter Worsley, who wrote on third world sociology, Hamza Alabi, who wrote on rural movements and rebellion, Kenneth Brown, urban anthropology, and Theodore Shanin on peasant movements and peasant economics. And he is the author of a very uh, well-known work on that time called The Awkward Class on Russian Peasants and Bolshevism. I was also mentored by Roger Owen on the his economic history of the modern Middle East. And during this period, when I was a student, I was also influenced by the work of the Annal School by Braudel and Lorwald Ladouri, and by the work of Eric Hausbaum on social movements and early rebellion, uh, by Terence Ranger on uh, the invention of tradition, and especially by Raymond Williams who wrote The City and the Country. In Manchester, I, dis uh, I discovered the work of Indian sociologists, uh, uh, and historians on the subaltern, especially the work of Partha Shatterjee, Ranajit Guha, and Spivak, which led me, led me to the uses and abuses of oral history in the study of war and peasant formations. I was trained with Theodore Shanin in doing fieldwork on rural transformations and on peasant households using the work of Chayanov and the Russian Marxists on peasant households. The result was my PhD in 80, 1983 on the polit political economy of rural transformations. That produced my first monograph on agricultural technology and peasant households in the Jordan Valley. My main challenge at that period was working as an academic and doing research under military occupation in Palestine. I was teaching five courses per term, 10 per year, while doing field work, writing up my thesis and publishing. I was twice arrested by soldiers for doing field work in a restricted military area, which was the Jordan Valley. During the 70s and 80s, while teaching at Birzeit University, we had to face continued closures of the campus. One time it was closed for one stretch of four and a half years during the first intifada between 1987-1993. During this period, we transferred the teaching process to dispersed offices in local towns, rented hotel rooms, and few times I had to travel to teach in Gaza refugee camps under conditions of closure. But the result was enriching in forging clandestine forms of education and new forms of curriculum and sociology that was adapted to this revolutionary environment. Another major challenge was language. Teaching and writing sociology in Arabic meant that students would suffer from having access the international scholarly material in English and other international languages. In my case, I had to write material in Arabic and translate it into English in order to access an international readership, as well as translating material from English to Arabic to make material available to the majority of our students who have had difficulty with the original sources. You asked me to make some practical suggestions. Uh, I must say I have uh, 
I'm very limited by both time and um, ability to provide from our own situation uh, practical advice such as you're requesting. Uh, I would say I will continue my remarks on the duality of language and then make some practical suggestions. I started publishing in Arabic in the early 70s when I helped in finding the Palestine Folklore and Ethnographic Society. I published several essays on Palestinian ethnography, peasant religion, rural movements, and class formations in rural society. My first scholarly study was an essay on factionalism and class formation under the British colonial period. I also published in 1985 a monograph on the peasantry of the Jordan Valley derived from my PhD thesis. In 1981, I published a study on early Islamic, early Islamic radical movements, which was published by Brazil University. One of my main challenges, which I referred to, was to teach, write, and publish in Arabic when my sociological training was in English. Since access to sociological literature in English and other European languages was essential for students, I and we had to develop a linguistic duality in lecturing in Arabic while training students reading in English. The Arabic literature and periodicals in Arabic in the 1980s and 90s was limited and not very satisfactory. This involved a substantial amount of translation, which was also very costly. This linguistic dilemma continues to plague advanced training in the social sciences in the, throughout the Middle East. Although the material that is available in Arabic periodicals today, coming from Beirut, Damascus, Cairo, Rabat, Tunis, and Doha, is much better than what existed 20 years ago. My main suggestion for early career sociologists is to produce readable, accessible, and coherent writings while producing your thesis. This will not only make your work marketable, but will help you clarify your own thoughts and conceptual objectives. In those days, you need, that is in our current days, you need to provide publishable material of your scholarly work if you are to secure employment. I also think it is always important to ground your work in one disciplinary area and a disciplinary methodology, even if your work is interdisciplinary. From my experience with several universities in Europe, the US, and in the Arab world, you will limit the marketability of your skills if you have a degree in area studies, such as Islam, Latin American studies, or Middle East studies or a general degree in the social sciences. And with this note, I thank you for listening and wish you, wish you very good luck. Thank you.